Associate Professor of National Security and Strategic Studies at Curtin University. Professor, we appreciate you uh, taking time to speak with us. Uh, firstly, we've been seeing a lot of discontent on the screen even over this reserve troops mobilization. People are leaving, others protesting. Of course, President Putin signing a decree to imprison anyone for up to 10 years for refusing to participate is not gaining him any favor at home. Um, is the Kremlin going, have to, going to have to rethink this plan? I mean, Putin needs continued support at home, doesn't he, for his actions in Ukraine? Look, I mean, it's really hard to judge because we need to remember that we're in the middle of the war and, and the war is not just about fighting on the battlefield. The war is about a massive confrontation in the information space. And, and, and that's certainly quite evident when it comes to the illustration of this mobilization. I mean, the picture that we get predominantly in the West is all about the negativity that comes across with mobilization, about people taking to the streets, protesting and... As, you, as your previous reporter um, um, has already uh, commented on, there's been even a shooting at one of the military commissariats and, 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 and the senior uh, defense representative has been critically injured. But equally, there is enough video footage that certainly travels through the Russian information space. And I'm not talking about Russian state control media, but social media, which shows there is a lot of enthusiasm and support for those who actually enlisted or actually volunteered to join the ranks. So unless we will see a, either a clear failure of, uh, of assembling these 300,000 strong additional troops or success in, uh, in, in, in scene mobilization through, we cannot really make judgment whether what, what's currently happening in, 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 in Moscow is, is a mistake by Putin's government or something that will actually uh, produce the results that uh, the Kremlin wants. Well, now the Kremlin obviously puts up a brave face saying everything is going into plan and because and, um, there hasn't been an experience with mobilization since the Second World War, obviously they expected errors of judgment and hence was this statement about uh, um, um, uh, an expectation that these errors of judgment will be um, uh, will be rectified. But again, as I said, we need to be quite careful in terms of jumping to any conclusions at this stage because we're getting one side of the story, but there is always a different side of the story that is evident as well. well that's a fair point. Meanwhile, Professor, Ukraine's president during an interview on Sunday seemed concerned over Russia possibly using nuclear weapons, saying, quote, maybe yesterday is, uh, it was a bluff, now it could be a reality. Under what circumstances do you think Russia would actually resort to its nuclear arsenal? Or is President Putin just bluffing? Look, I mean, he was trying to make it quite clear that he is not bluffing, and he actually put it in a direct line saying this is not a bluff. Um, once this so-called referendum will come to an end and it should be, uh, should be finished in, in, in within, within 48 hours, and once Russia will process through the formalities of recognizing uh, these uh, four uh, regions of Ukraine as part of Russia's territory. Uh, what may what may happen, and that's and that's the logic that certainly a lot of um, a lot of um, uh, uh, sort of experts in Russia suggest, and something that's been hinted by by the Kremlin as well as Russian parliamentarians. Then once Russia will start treating those regions of Ukraine as their own, then under Russian constitution as well as Russia's law of defense. It can then apply a different type of force uh, to protect it, given the fact that part of those regions Russia will claim to be their own are still under Ukrainian control. And whether that means that Russia will then have to declare a formal war on Ukraine, because surprise, surprise, it hasn't really declared any war because uh, uh, Putin used this very carefully, carefully crafted term, special military operation, simply saying we're at war, but we're not really at war with Ukraine. And, and that would may also mean that Russia can resort to a different level of force, including asymmetric means, such as, for example, the threat of possible deployment of technical nuclear munitions. Because obviously mm -hmm. the Russians, if they will resort to nuclear weapons, they're not going to use strategic weapons that they, um, uh, that they uh, have in their arsenal, which obviously uh, aim to deter the United States, NATO, uh, and, and other nuclear armed nations. But they can use smaller type weapons that would achieve uh, uh, strategic effects, but on, on far, far more limited scale, given the fact that even with ongoing mobilization, 
the 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 uh, the, the arrival of significant um, uh, reserves to, to, to the front line cannot be expected for another couple of months. And certainly the Ukrainian forces are not going to sit and wait for the Russians um, uh, to have their reinforcements arrive. They will try to uh, take as much advantage of the current situation as possible. And that creates obviously a possible risk that Russia may then may get desperate and trying mm -hmm. to um, um, uh, deter Ukraine from taking any coercive actions, including through possible threat or actual deployment of tactical nuclear munitions. Right, we'll have to leave it there. Professor Alexei Muraviev in Perth, Australia. Thank you once more.